Hey, it's Steve. In this video, I'm going to show you how to EQ reverb on a bass line so you can get a nice, thick sounding mid range bass without making a mess on the low end or overlapping on your drums. Here is the track, here's the bass, and here's the reverb. I'm going to exaggerate that so you can really hear it and bring in the mix. In this track, we also have a sub. and some keys, and a lead. Here's the bass dry. Kind of goes back underneath a little bit. And to bring it up front, I'm gonna dial up some reverb on this return track. Here it comes. Bass feels wider, more present. That's too much, but you get the idea. So what are we doing here? Well, there's a return track with a hybrid reverb, a little short plate, short decay time, compressor to get it up louder. But look before, there is an EQ8 happening. I'm gonna solo just the reverb to really make this obvious. That's the reverb when we're EQing it before. Like there's the bass, the EQ, then the reverb. Let me turn this off. What do you hear? Woo woo woo. More low end. And some more of that buzzy high end. Let me filter up this bass a little bit. If I want to do a creative filter sweep leading up to a buildup, and I got the bass wide open, listen to how much buzz is in the reverb. This bandpass filter, before the reverb, clears up the reverb so it matches the frequency range of the bass line. That's the important part. We're EQing the reverb so that the reverb return matches the frequency of the bass line. So we're not overlapping the hi-hats and claps and snares. We're not overlapping the kick drum and the sub bass. We're just getting a clean bass reverb that makes the bass instrument sound bigger and fit into the mix between the other sounds. Let me illustrate this in another way. We have four parts. Melody up high. Keyboard playing chords in the mid-range. Sub bass down low. And the bass line, track 10, comes there in the middle. I'm not going to leave the filter wide open like that. Most of the time the bass is going to be ho hovering in the low mids. Why do I want reverb? I want to pull out the sound of that bass to fit between the sub and the keys. So here comes the reverb. And to make that bass reverb just sit real nice in there, I'm EQing it. That means I have a high pass filter, band one, around 250 hertz. Let's make this really clear. The high pass filter is taking out extra low frequencies that we don't need for that bass line. So we don't have a hovering womb getting in the way of the kick and sub. And then we have a low pass filter on top to catch any crispy high frequency stuff that we don't want to have in the top of the bass sound. And these are adjustable. I like to use basically starting points of basically 250 for the high pass filter, 250 hertz, and for the low pass filter, aim for 5,000 and adjust from there. That's before. And after EQing the reverb. So we get a mix that just fits together nicely. And I might be pushing this reverb up more than I would in the final mix for illustration purposes. but something around like that. And once you have that dialed it in, check this out. We can put in the same reverb on some other synths and just bring them into that 3D space. How about the keys? Ooh, did you hear that? Here's without the reverb. 
keys are kind of flat, just laying against the mix, and with some reverb. It comes into a space and they're like kind of floating through the mix, if that describes it for you. <laughs> And then, if you really want to have some fun with the bass, you can even afford to play with delay. These are like the rules of bass. People say, don't put, don't put a bass into delay, don't put reverb on the bass. It's gonna get all muddy, it's gonna mess up your mix. It's can't, you can't do it, it's like one of those rules. Well, guess what, you totally can if you just understand not allowing your bass to overlap too much sub bass frequency, too much low frequency, in the rest of the track. As long as you clean up the lows and you're aware of where the sub frequencies are happening, you can totally put all kinds of effects on your mid-range bass line to get a wide stereo feel, bright kind of duh, decay or extra buzz and stuff. And pull it right in there with the sub. And to illustrate, because I like to do everything too far, I'm gonna put reverb on the sub and just see what happens. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Of course, the reverb is still EQ'd. Let's bypass this EQ, see what happens. I mean, when there's nothing else playing, it's not bad. But I think I want to keep that sub nice and dry, nice and flat, nice and round to work with the kick in the sub pressure low end. And have my bass line doing the buzzy stuff. Getting into some fun with the effects. Okay, so before I jam all day, I think that's the uh, illustration that makes sense. Again, to do this, I took a return track, dropped a reverb on that track. I have it set to the convolution plate, small plate, and de decay time, 2.7 seconds. Short decay is key to make sure you can hear each individual bass note, get them to match with the harmony that the keyboard is playing, and not end up with muddy soup of unintelligible music. <laughs> uh, we put an EQ before the hybrid reverb, kicking the EQ with a high pass filter at 250 hertz, low pass filter at five kilohertz or 5,000 hertz. And then after the um, reverb, I put in a compressor with auto makeup gain just so I could get the reverb return up louder and really hear it in this tutorial. <laughs> then as we're playing, I send the track that I want into the reverb, make a little mix. Okay, that's it for me, I'm Steve Knotts. Drop a comment if you want any of these effects racks. I could probably find a way to export some racks and give them to you, either the effects rack, or if you want the bass instrument to play with, I mean, it's pretty much a stock instrument, but I tweaked it a little bit. Let me know if you like those. I can get them over to you as Ableton Racks with a couple of macro snapshot presets to play with. And let me know how you like this tutorial. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next time. Oh, and if you want to know how I go about mixing to set my levels and make a nice sounding mix, I can also help you with that with my hands-on mix course called Make Space for Bass. I'll put a link in the description where you can check out more about that to learn. Gain staging, leveling, track group, routing, effects, compression, and EQ to come out with a master channel mix that drops tight, solid, heavy, low end every time without you feeling like frustrated. All right, <laughs> see you next time.